Good morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church in Woodstock, Illinois. It is a joy to have uh, us gathered together today. We have birthdays this week. Lydia Dunker and Lynn Idle have birthdays on Thursday, Larry Stagger on Saturday, and Lucas Borhouse next Sunday. Ray and Angela Thuma have an anniversary on Tuesday. We are continuing our Lenten book discussion, Lent in Plain Sight. Uh, if you'd like to join us on Thursday nights, contact the church office. Uh, we will be postponing our discussion of everyone's an alien when you're an alien too until a time when things are a little less hectic. Uh, please keep in your prayers this week uh, June Hassler and her family as they grieve the death of Herb. Remember to keep the Pastor Nominating Committee in your prayers as they continue to listen for God's voice and guidance. Hopefully you have uh, built your one great hour of sharing fish. You can decorate the fish if you like. Um, and we hope that the Lenten devotional is encouraging your journey. We, uh, as we continue through Lent, I hope that you have found your wilderness page for today in your Lent bag. Um, you're invited to color that page, to color yourself in with Jesus in the wilderness. Next week, we'll be celebrating communion. Prepackaged elements were included in your Lent bag. Next week, uh, also after worship, we will have another Zoom fellowship time at 1015, and we also will have a breakout room that's optional if you want to play a game. We had a wonderful game of charades last month. Thanks today to our liturgist, Lydia Johansson, uh, and uh, the jazz trio, Jody Fields, Jim Seidel, and Bob Diss. And thanks, as always, to Christy and Bob for their gifts. Let us begin our worship with God with a responsive call to worship. From water to wilderness, God's covenant continues. God's kingdom comes near. Through the water and the wilderness, we make the journey to the promised land. We follow Jesus on the Latin path, for where he is, we would be also. Loving God, we thank you that we have been called your beloved children and are cared for through the wilderness of life. As we worship you, refresh us with your journey ahead. Show us Christ's path so we may follow. Amen.
God's love is steadfast, even when we are unthankful. Without fear, then we confess our sins together. God of mercy, we begin this Lenten sentence in confession. We do not live according to your ways, but according to our own. We have failed to love you. We have neglected our neighbor. We have abused the stranger. Forgive us, we pray. When we are tempted to follow paths other than those set before us by Christ, help us to turn toward your kingdom drawing near. In Christ's name we pray. Though in the waters of baptism, we are brought from death into a new life in Christ. In him we are forgiven and reconciled to all things in heaven on earth. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen. Gracious God, in every season and circumstance, we need to hear your sustaining voice. By the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us your good news that we may return and trust to see your kingdom coming near. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down to, on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, who I dearly love, and I, in you I will find happiness. At once the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild animals and the angel took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, announcing God's good news after saying, Now it's the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. The word of the Lord. A poem by Ruth Burgess. The desert waits, ready for those who come, who come obedient to the Lord, to the Spirit's leading, or who are driven because they will not come any other way. The desert always waits, ready to let us know who we are, the place of self-discovery. And whilst we fear, and rightly, the loneliness and emptiness and harshness, we forget the angels whom we cannot see for our blindness, but who come when God decides that we need their help, when we are ready for what they can give us. Jesus left the Jordan to live alone in the wilderness for 40 days. Not he and his donkey, packed with the six-week supply of food and water and clothes and cell phone, I wonder if he intended to be there that long. I don't know about you, but this adventure would terrify me. There are probably some more outdoorsy folks in this congregation, maybe the scouts, but that's not me. I took my, ch my children camping a few times and, well, it didn't work out that well. I blame it on the scary movies of my youth with a flashlight, a car jam-packed full of supplies, other campers within 50 feet on all sides, we barely got a wink of sleep for fear of the dark. On our last camping trip, we all slept in the car with the doors locked. It would take an insistent spirit indeed to get me out in that wilderness. Even an experienced deep woods hiker, though, with a well-stocked backpack would struggle, I think, living off this arid land for 40 days. And that's without Satan on your tail, as if Satan is not always on our tail. Angels or not, that wilderness experience was an ordeal for Jesus. He was hungry, thirsty, smelly, lonely, and tempted. Mark doesn't much care about details, doesn't tell us what happened between Jesus and Satan those 40 days. That's left to our imagination and the accounts offered by Matthew and Luke. Satan taunts Jesus, don't worry about pleasing good old dad, I'll be your daddy. I'll give you what you need. 
You, you don't need to put yourself out there. Just side with me and you can avoid suffering and death. You can have power, wealth, and security if you just lay low and join my side. Jesus' temptations were specific to his call. He had just heard that he was God's son. In the wilderness, Jesus had to consider whether he wanted to be part of that long line of Abraham's children who were to be a blessing to the whole world. Jesus had to consider whether he would follow in the sandals of Moses, who was sent to confront the oppressor. He had to decide whether he would take his seat as the heir to King David and shepherd his people. He was going to be a prophet like Elijah. Was he going to be a prophet like Elijah who defied Ahab and Jezebel to bring his people back to God? Would he be Isaiah's Emmanuel? Taking the government upon his shoulders, did he have the nerve to follow this path, even if Zechariah was right? even if that path brought him through the gates of Jerusalem on a donkey with evil men encircling him, piercing his hands and feet, staring and gloating, dividing his garments among them, casting lots for his clothing. Jesus is baptized. He is declared a child of God. God is happy with him. It must have been really tempting to just quit while he was ahead. But the Spirit drove him into the wilderness where those words from God would sustain him. God does not abandon us. Jesus was surrounded by wild animals. Perhaps they were menacing or possibly, very possibly, a peaceful, a peaceable kingdom gathered in his presence. I can picture a gentle lion lying down next to God's lamb. He wasn't alone. The angels cared for God's child, just as the angels care for all of God's children in this wilderness journey. Praise be to God, Jesus emerged from the wilderness, telling us now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. In that wilderness, God's promise is confirmed. God was with him in his time of desperate need. He trusts this good news all the way to Calvary. Out of the waters of Jordan, out of the wilderness, out of his battle with Satan, emerged our Savior. Lent isn't the only time we are in the wilderness. Frankly, it seems we have spent the past year there. We may have had food and drink, shelter and showers, but we have felt more at risk, more alone, more fearful. This Lent, the practice most at hand may be remembrance. Where where have we met God's angels in this wilderness? How have we been sustained? How have we been tested? What gave us the strength to endure? We, have we noticed that God has been with us? Do we trust the, great, the good news that we are never abandoned? Perhaps the lion is not lying down with the lamb quite yet. Satan is still in the world tempting and testing. But we can trust this good news. The kingdom is coming because Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ comes to us in our times of need. Remember that you are God's child. Forget not the angels. Trust the good news that Christ's kingdom has come to wherever you are. Amen. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart.
heart of God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Let us pray. God of creation, we thank you for providing for us time and space to come nearer to you. We thank you that there is no place we can go, that you are not with us, no time, that you are not waiting for us to turn to you. We praise you for coming to us in your beloved Jesus, for sending your angels to care for us in all circumstances. We ask for your blessings this Lenten season. Still our restless souls and enable us to rest in your love, appreciate your blessings, answer your call. In your mercy, Be with all the people who are in need this day. Give those who hunger their daily bread. Make your forgiveness manifest to all who suffer guilt. Mend broken relationships. Release the captives. Befriend the lonely and the alien. Heal the sick. Hold the dying. Comfort the grieving. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Herb Hassler his faithful worship, his service to Christ's church, his friendship. Be with June and her family. Give them confidence in the promise of eternal life. Guide the leaders of your church, Lord. Bless our plans. Bring us close to you and to one another in this challenging time. Encourage and lead the pastor nominating committee and pastors discerning your call. We pray all these things with faith that you hear and you meet us where we are. And now we pray the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may you know that you are a beloved child of God. May you feel the presence of God's angels surrounding you. May you live trusting that the kingdom has come near. Amen.